Okay, 24th of the first 18, I have no idea where January's gone to. Um, hello again, folks. This is SS2. Uh, we're going to discuss today. Um, it's based on a phrase that Nigel Penn many moments ago about discrimination and how we see people who are different or seem to be different. And the phrase that Nigel penned was, uh, during the discussion about this, was this image of us will change. Mm. Now, if we look at, say, the coloured situation I mentioned earlier, now it's kind of more acceptable and, you know, you, you've got more black people in communities, you know, you've got more black people knocking about with people, you know, they're going to local clubs, stuff like that. It's more acceptable now. It's also on, on TV and film and that. And, and I believe that the image of people like yourselves will ultimately change in time. Yeah, people's perceptions do tend to change. You're always going to get the, the odd ones who uh, will always be biased towards people. But on the whole, most people, I mean, I mentioned Raymond this morning. Raymond Gill, lovely Raymond, and we all, you yeah. know, you've only got to mention oh. Raymond's name and his smile because he brought a lot of joy to us. But Raymond, when I first was uh, presented with him, I was asked if I would work with him. Naturally, you know. Yeah. Uh, Raymond was very withdrawn. Uh, he was still very, very upset about his mum and dad because his mum and dad oh, yeah. uh, died so, yeah. quite quickly one after the other and that was really, really sad for him. He was put into care. He uh, spent time at Mayfield, Mayfield School. Uh, but when he came to me, and you remember now because she was there, when he came to me he used to have his head down and he had a picture of his uh, mum, didn't he? Yeah, I don't yeah. think we actually had a picture of his dad, did we? don't think so. No, no his dad was di uh, killed suddenly in a, in a, um, a car accident. And his mum died of cancer. Oh. I think his dad died first, his mum died after. But he was left with a lot of grief and he really wasn't expressing it. And he would carry this picture around. He would sit and cry over it, wouldn't he, you know? Oh, yeah. But we, 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 we worked with him over a period of time and then I kind of got him to, to, to get the head up and, and, you know, look at me and talk to me. And of course, the rest is history. Too you know, cool. Raymond became quite comfortable with who he was. He, 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 he mixed in communities, Wickton. Uh, we went to Sillerth, went all over the place, you know, and people knew him. He became a bit of a superstar. It was almost like in the White Heaven News, oh. you knew at some point his picture was going to be in that paper. It's like, <laughs> it's Raymond. Uh, but I loved that because for me that did change yeah, it did, yeah. the image. Because, I mean, uh, Raymond was, was uh, he had some Mongol, you know, you mentioned earlier there. And of course, we all know, you know, mm. people get called mongs and stuff like that. He got a lot of, uh, a lot of bullying, but he could give back mm. what he got. Mm. Um, so just think of um, uh, that on the second part. But just to start, we're going to go around the room and just highlight one incident <coughs> you've had where you've been picked on because of, you know, the way you are or the way they believe you are. Gary, I'll start with you. Yeah. Because you had a number of ones you brought up some time ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. First of all, can you remember any names that were um, spat at you by people who were bullying you? Ah, uh, I got a call, Spucker. Yeah, that was a common one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And obviously that made you feel upset. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, was there any incident you remember that was pretty horrendous for you? That I mean, if you, you don't have to, if you don't want to, but but it'd be used if you could. An incident where perhaps it got out of control, and you know you maybe had to go back at them, and then they carried on, and no one dealt with it. Was there a situation like that? Uh, was it school, or was it in your adult life? You know, when when was it? Or if there, if there was if there wasn't one, don't worry. I got, I got a punch in the jaw. And was there any reason for that? Just the fact that, that, you know, you were who you are and they decided to have a go? Ah, uh, he got me for, for, for a veggie burger at the, the at him. So you, I'm assuming this, this person oh. had a go at you first before you threw the veggie burger. Or did you throw the veggie burger? Yeah, they got me first. Right, and that was you retaliate? Yep. Yeah? Yep. And that, that's not, not nice, especially when you get hit with a veggie burger. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just quite shocked. It's a veggie burger, not a normal burger, but hey. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks, Gary. I'm going to miss Lucy out because I know that, that we've tried this before and there's not really anything that Lucy can... Because you've always been fairly well protected, haven't you? Yeah. Nigel. Ooh. 
you're back again. Sorry about that. Uh, Nigel, um, do you remember any experience uh, bullying-wise that... Uh, well, I did get uh, tired of using uh, sticks because I did because somebody said I didn't need them and yeah, it, it, uh, felt, it made me feel a bit low. So well, that know. wouldn't be us now, so would no. it? We, <laughs> no, no, not, not you guys. That wouldn't be droppy sticks. Just, 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 just <laughs> People leave oh, Stephen's impersonation. <laughs> 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 I feel a bit of hypocrisy coming on here. Yeah? Um, that's awful, Nigel. Who would do that? Who would, <laughs> what kind of law life would do that to you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nigel. <laughs> 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 that was a classic <laughs> one, Nigel. <Nat. laughs> Sorry, folks, we really don't bully people. It's, it's, no, you know, no, it's a bit of, bit of uh, banter. <laughs> Not Absolutely not. What about uh, the situation with the, the, the two bullies that, that I got the police involved and do you want to touch on that one? No, it's just, I, it's just, I don't know what was wrong with them, they were you know, jealous or something or this, this, I started shouting stuff and I just didn't uh, rise to it and then I, uh, I mentioned it to you and then the police as well. And mm -hmm. And then they started uh, not liking that. So well, they, I see them now and again. They don't say anything much at the moment because of the police. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think's changed on that situation now? This brings us back onto the second part of this. What 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 did we do uh, that made things a little bit easier apart from the police getting involved? Because God love the police, they are strapped for resources yeah, yeah. and that. And, and now we've got very small people now in the police force. We're now going to build little police stations to to cater yeah, for that. But that's another story. Um, that's a little police story we're going to cover in another podcast. Aye. Um, but they were really good, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they were good, yeah. Yeah, but, but what did we do that, that enabled you to, to, to cope with it better? Because you had to regularly go past that house, didn't you? Yeah. I just, to, to just get on with what I was doing, just get on with my routine, and just uh, get out in the world. What else did they say to you about when, when, they, when they shouted things at you? What did I tell you to do? I didn't tell you to ignore it because that, that, that's dead easy to, to say. But if it's every day and someone shouts something, you know, it's quite hard to, to ignore it. You've got to get a bit angry, aren't you? Yeah. So the anger oh, yeah, I mean, talked to me about. I, I, felt, I felt like frustrated and anger that I, I wanted to do something about it. I said, tell them to shut up and stuff. And, but no, I just. Said no, don't rise to it. So you didn't throw a veggie burger at? Uh, no, I didn't throw anything. Right, right. No. Not a normal burger. No. No, no that's no, all right. Not a normal burger either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but with the burger. Uh, 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 well, that kind of also ties in with Gary because Gary and, and unfortunately, and it normally happens, and in law it does as well. If you lose your temper. Uh, you become the perpetrator. You're the one that actually uh, is probably going to get punished more than the than the bully. And people tell you not to lose your temper. Just ignore them. You know, walk away. No. Uh, it doesn't doesn't work. You know, no. nine times out of ten, they're going to uh, probably give you a smack on the back of your head while you're walking away. Mm. Um, Gary, I'm not saying you were wrong to do what you did. No. You know, because I mean, obviously that wasn't nice for you. Um, Nigel, what's it like now when you walk past? It's quiet. Just, uh, just, uh, just uh, I don't, I, I really don't see them in here. So. And just, I just go, go to the shop or go where I'm going, and that's it. Well, we we had a just on that one. We had a classic one that, that was to do with a, with an incident I was involved in, and it's it's always said to people, uh, oh well, uh, they'll forget about you uh, tomorrow. There'll be somebody else that they're they're bullying. That's that's a classic one that. You know, people come out with as if that's a complete panacea for all the build, uh, bullying that, that goes on. It isn't, is it? No. In part, it's kind of true because they do get a bit naffed off for getting no response because they're looking for response. Yeah, they are. You yeah. know, and obviously in Gary's case, that's what they got. Uh. You know, um, I mean, you don't adopt what my dad told me. I've told you the story, haven't I? Uh, I was regularly going past these bullies. One was called Graham Henry, and I don't mind naming these people. And the other one was, was uh, Prowse, Stefan Prowse, um, who was uh, part of a German family. And I'm not slagging off Germans because I've got some friends who are German. But these two idiots used to regularly bully me on the way to, to school until one day my dad was home off contract yeah. and he found out. So he said to me, uh, in those days, 
Donaghy boy, because I'm back in the, the 50s, used to have like little um, bags that you carried your little uh, bait in. We didn't have proper bait boxing with like, you know, pictures of action men and stuff like that. And he said to me, because I had marbles, yeah. right? And he said, right boy, this is what you do. And I'm telling you, if you don't fucking do, you're going to come home and answer to me. So this is how it went. The marbles were put into me, um, a little bait bag. He said, when they come to you, right? When you walk, it was called the green, this area. And I, I used to try and avoid the video, but I, I couldn't. Um, as soon as they come at you, I want you to hit the first one with this, this bag of marbles. I mean, obviously, you know, now if you did that, you'd probably get uh, done for, for actual bodily harm. And he said, I want you to hit that first one. I'll guarantee you, son, that second one will not come for you. They'll probably run off somewhere screaming. Now, of course, at that age, you're like, oh, well, all right then. Um, <laughs> and because I was so fearful of what was going to happen all the time, every time, you know, your stomach's gone mm -hmm. before you get there. A moment of madness. Just in that moment, I saw him coming towards me, uh, Stephen Prowse. I mean, Graham Emery's dead now. That's a shame, isn't it? Um, and I hit him square on. And I didn't know much about broken noses and stuff like that, but I broke his nose. He went screaming, uh, blood everywhere, and then Graham Henry ran in the house for his for his mother to you know to help him. This is a was a big lad. I mean, I wasn't so big then. Mm. And uh, th that evening, after it happened, my dad took me round to, to to the house to I've told this story, haven't I? Uh, to the house. Um, this one was kicking off his uh, his mother. And my dad said to them, he fucking does it again and I'm going to come round and I'll break his fucking nose twice. I thought, oh God, mm -hmm. all right, dad. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we go. Now, that, that's an instant uh, that, that wouldn't necessarily work for everybody. Oh, no. But it worked for me. And from that day on, uh, if anybody rattled my cage, I was in there. I mean, Steve had talked about this. A lot of that was rage from my childhood, you know. I mean, it used to come out sometimes in fights. But it protected me, yeah. because I would never ever get into a fight unless someone rattled my cage. Mm. Um, now, physically you're not always going to be at a fight, but mentally you can get strong. Mm. Yeah, and I think you got a lot stronger through that yeah, situation, did didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Nigel. Mark? Uh -huh. Situation where you were bullied? Uh, because of who you are? I've been bullied a couple of times, haven't I? Uh, You're asking me for? I wasn't there. No, I wasn't there. <laughs> wasn't you the only was you? I must say, folks, as well, that SS2 is not about bullying. Yeah, no, this yeah. does sound very much as though we do bully the clients, but we, we it's a nice kind of bullying. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go on, Mark. <laughs> oh, I can't remember that. I just saw that picture there of you that Stephen drew, which is in the cupboard. Uh, oh, no. yeah. At that moment, they was getting quite pensive. That's the drawing that That's Stephen did here. Uh, yeah. Um, do you remember that, Stephen? I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still got the picture. <laughs> it's a classic. Do you not remember? I can't remember. Should, should I bully you now, Mark? So you've got something <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I just bully you now. A really fresh uh, account. Um, <laughs> what about when you were in um, Dormage of the Name? Oh, no. Your previous uh, accommodation. No. Yeah. Around that area when you were walking to the shops or you were walking to town. Do you remember any instances? You used to call us names, but uh, it's all, it's, it went off, didn't it? It's, it all stopped. Did you take it back to your service? About the boy? Yeah, I took it back to the service and they, they, didn't, sell, they didn't sell it after that. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, everything was all right. After that, mm -hmm. no, I, I, I've had any bullying since. Even when you you walk around town in no, your, your no, funeral no, suit no, no. in the middle of winter no. with no knee coat, knee hat on, mm -hmm. you yeah. never know, and you might have to go to a funeral. Why? <laughs> Top of a hat. You know, you're prepared. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you, Mark. Um, Jennifer. Yeah. Right. Just one instance. You don't have to go into War and Peace. Um, just one instance of bullying that, 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 that you didn't like that disturbed you quite a lot. You have mentioned some over the, um, the months. Just one instance that was not very nice. Not that any bullying's nice because it yeah, isn't. Yeah, bullying. Yeah. Yeah. I've had um, like swear, I'm gonna swear, swearing at me. Where where was that, Jen? It was on the bus going to Lucy's. Mm. I mean, the bus has become a, a, a hub of bullying now. 
mm-hmm. and you know nobody's dealing with it. Uh, I had an instance, as you know, that yeah, I eventually yeah. took to court uh, to get these people uh, done for it because it was horrible. Uh, and a lot of people don't want to travel on buses now because there's no there's no means of dealing with antisocial behaviour. And I, and, I, and I do support the bus drivers because it is difficult for them because they've got a bus to look after, they've got to get from A to B, you know, and how many bus drivers want to come out from behind that um, that little till area yeah. and then deal with some of the aegis that are on there. It's a shame really, it's something I've got a bit of a, um, a beamy bite about and I think it needs to be dealt with, especially on trains as well. People go on with drink mm-hmm. on the trains, get out of control and set effing and blind well, and the, whatever else. The bus driver heard him, mm-hmm. what he said to us, and he, the driver said, if you don't stop calling the names, I'm going to stop the bus and you'll get up and you'll walk it. And if you don't get up, I'll, I'll get the police on to you. Oh, well, some people do that, don't they? You know, I mean, we did a, a piece, didn't we, the bus, mm-hmm. and that was just so oh, funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and, and it was done for a reason because people do get exposed to that on a, on a bus. It's not nice. Um, I've seen it quite a lot. Gary, you've experienced it as well. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure other people have as well. I just get up and nut them. That's, that's probably the best way <laughs> to, to do it. I've done 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 I took it back to one of my, one of my carers and they tried to sort it out for us. Mm-hmm. It's not always possible, but you know, if someone's backing you, supporting you. I tried, if she tried to catch him because he was on my road, because he was trying to follow me as well. Mm-hmm. And my carer said, Don't leave her alone. I'm going to report you to your mum or I'm going to get the police on you. Just leave her alone. If I do nothing wrong to you, just leave her. And then I've got one in the house and tried to cry in my bedroom. Yeah, we're going to come on to to, to that later on. It's the the biggest damage that's done is the emotional damage. Oh. I think I, I, I said uh, at some point about the the girl at the school, mm. well known school, that I was asked to get involved with uh, because she was persistently getting bullied. And the reason why she was getting bullied was because she was from a family that didn't have a great deal. Mm. And her clothing was quite unkempt and shabby, and you know, she, she, I don't think she ever really got washed properly in the morning because uh, her parents were drinkers. And you know, you've probably heard these stories before in the newspapers and stuff like that, but this has gone back quite a long time ago. And she was regularly uh, bullied on the way home um, from school. And I went to a meeting about it, and like I said earlier, she was, she was actually asked to sit in with these bullies in, in a room to try to sort it out and I, I, typical of me, said no, that's not how it's going to be, I don't think that's a good idea because she's, she's had enough anyway, she's hardly going to go and sit and face them now, I said because they're only going to say oh yeah yeah we won't do it again and then when you know she's gone home again it'll kick off again because there's no real way of dealing with it, there's no reprisal as such, if you went to the police they'd just probably say the same thing because they've got other stuff to deal with. Um, that girl, and this is not meant to make people miserable, but that girl eventually committed suicide. Now, you probably hear a lot about it in uh, things like Facebook and stuff like that. When you're going home and that's happened to you on a regular basis and no one is dealing with it, you're left with all that. And sometimes some children, there's no other way out. You know, you can judge them if you want and say, oh, well, you know, you should have done this or whatever. But I saw the disparity with that situation. She was from a, a family, and you probably know some families that are like that, mm. but you can't blame the kids for that, you know. But when you go to school and you're looking like that, you just prime meat for, for these bullies, aren't you? Oh, yeah. But God love her, she, she um, eventually took her own life, and that was horrible. Because I felt the guilt of that, because I couldn't do anything about it. Um, so when, when we talk about bullying, when you're in meetings and people talk about it, don't let them just shrug it off, because it's 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 really bad stuff, mm. you know, and it's it's not the sort of physical, you know. You probably get slapped a few times. It's going home and just staying with it and thinking tomorrow I'm going to have to go through all that again. Not everyone's got a dad like I, and it was totally mental uh, that told me to do what I did. You know, it worked for me, but a lot of people Did you ring probably, the police? Oh no, no, no. My dad, well, my dad and the police had a kind of known relationship, shall we say. Um, oh, well, well, we'll wait until he, he sleeps it off, um, Jan, that was my mum. Um, don't really want to get into that because he'll go up shit and probably knock us out. So they had a bit of respect for me, Dad, and they had respect for them as well, so it kind of worked, worked okay. Um, 
Stephen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jen. Do you remember any instances in your youth where you were bullied? Uh, well, uh, no, not, not really. Not by any uh, sort of other kids. If anything, I was probably on the other side of it. Um, but no, not really by any, any kids as such. I mean, I suppose the nearest thing um, to bullying was probably uh, living with my dad as a teenager. Um, which is, well, yeah, it's like living with your bully. <laughs> so, yeah. Living with your bully. <laughs> I think that was the only sort of, uh, only sort of account I can get, really, because as a kid, um, I mean, I've always, you know, I've always been sort of confident, so anyone that was, uh, you know, trying to bully me or anything like that, or attempted to, or anything, that would just, you would just get the fight, that would be it, you know, or you would just, you know, you can win a fight, you can... You can beat a bully by by not throwing a punch, just by with you know your tongue's better than your fists, you know. So if I, I couldn't put them down verbally, then yeah, you'd just have a fight, and nine times out of ten you'd win. But um, so if you fast track into your adult life, then yeah, um, and, and and there are different strands of bullying. Remember, you know, we had this talk about the school bully. Yeah. There's different ways of bullying people. There's many many ways of doing it. And quite often these bullies sit behind their safe desks or safe whatever it is, whatever building they're in, and they do things mm. that actually give the same sensation, the same feelings uh, of being bullied head on. Have you had any instances like that? Uh, I have, yeah, but um, people who, who have tried to, to be that kind of bully, um, you know, people in positions of power or, or such you know you come across them people whether you know it's it's on the neighborhood it's in the workplace it's wherever <coughs> and uh, you know it they all it's all the same suit it's just different faces they all just do the same sort of uh, strategies and things but uh, you know fine well that deep down they're just miserable with themselves um, and just take a little sort of sadistic pleasure in trying to put other people down or make them miserable but um, you know, nothing's forever, so there's always, uh, you know, the situation you're in, you won't always live at the same place, you won't always work in the same place, but they'll always be miserable with themselves and they'll always be jealous of people or, you know, and it, a lot of it's sort of secretly behind closed doors, there might be this facade that they're, uh, you know, they think they're great and they think they're important, but really they know fine well that they're not. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's, that's true that. I mean, quite often, um, I mean, it has been kind of proven in psychological studies that uh, most, if not all, bullies are very insecure and they need to, to subdue somebody else to make them feel more powerful. And they do it in different ways, you know, it could mm. be verbal, could be physical or whatever. Uh, but that's true, that's Stephen. Um, and again, Stephen said, time does move on and, you know, you're not going to change the way they are, but you can change your own perception of how yeah. things are. And we're going to touch on that in the next uh, part. Thanks, Stephen, for being so brutally honest. Uh, Trey, you've been sitting waiting there, haven't you, thinking, oh, God, he's, not, he's <laughs> asked Stephen, so he's going to ask me now. Uh, one instance. Uh, one instance, yeah, because, um, yeah, I've had bullying at school and bullying at home and bullying at work. Um, controlling people can be bullies. Uh, at work, uh, a director I worked with at the time bullied everyone in the company, the women more than the men, and um, would even throw things at you, and I had things thrown at me at work, uh, if I did something in, uh, in eyes, his eyes is incorrect. So um, I didn't do it the way he liked it, so I would have lever arch files full of things thrown at me. Uh, stuff like that. So yeah, that was not very pleasant, and um, not a good place to be when you're a, a, a clerk and you're dealing with a director. Um, but that director eventually got uh, lost his job because everybody stood up against him, and uh, he had to resign. Mm. Yeah, um, karma is a wonderful thing, but you could probably end up deed yourself before that person gets it. So you know. That's good that that happened, but yeah. people will say, oh, well, you know, eventually they'll, 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 they'll get it. Well, you could be dead by the time they do, and if they ever do. So we're going to have a break now. So no, yeah. uh, we're going to come back uh, in about five, ten minutes, and then we're going to look at, um, and Stephen kind of touched on it a wee bit, about how you can mm -hmm. possibly, Jen, 
how you can possibly um, put things in place that might actually help with these situations. Won't rectify it, but it'll help you to um, cope with it better.